They reached a 7050T. Great Scott! It's 1.21 terabits! Like, gigawatts, except gigawatts are not a thing. You know what I'm doing. All right, so here's the deal. These Arista switches were the bee's knees like 10 years ago. And they are being jettisoned by the Enterprise. And so you can pick these up for three to $400. And they're worth every penny right now in today's market because it's 48 10 gig copper ports. And this particular one has four 40 gig copper ports. Now, there's some other configurations that have different port configs. You can get all SFP if you want. Uh, but don't do that. Uh, you can also get uh, SFP plus uplinks instead of the 40 gig, but you can get adapters that will adapt 40 gig to a single SFP plus. And you can also get SFP plus to copper adapters, although these start to get pricey. The, the 10 gig to 40 gig adapter is like, I think 40 bucks, and the uh, SFP plus copper adapter is like 100 which actually has come down quite a bit in the last year because it takes very, very advanced lithography silicon to do that in any kind of power friendly way. So that's cool. You can pick those up. I picked these up from fs.com. Works really well so that I can integrate with my existing network. But yeah, oh yeah, this thing runs Linux. So if you weren't, if you didn't already have your wallet out and getting your credit card to go to eBay and buy one of these because 48 10 gig copper ports for $300, it's crazy. It runs Linux. Let's take a look under the hood. So it turns out there's an x86 PC in here. This is a dual core something or other. It doesn't matter. You've got two, this particular config has full size DDR3. Some other configurations will have M.2. There's a higher end version of this switch that has M.2 switches, which has been pretty popular on message boards. But bottom line, this thing runs Linux. And there are so many of them on the surplus market that there may be a whole cottage industry around porting standard Linux to this thing. Now, you say that it runs Linux. Linux is really not doing a lot of horsepower here. Linux is really just the management engine. And you can see pretty clearly, this is pretty much a reference implementation from the silicon vendor that's actually doing the backplane switching. So like all your VLANs and, and packet forwarding and all that stuff, basically all of it is handled in this fabric. And the Linux part of it is really just about the configuration and management. Now, when you get these things out of the box, you'll look online, a lot of people have trouble with these because it's not like a normal switch where you just start plugging stuff in. At least if it's a default firmware config, well, it depends on the version of the firmware because older firmwares were even more onerous than newer versions of the firmware. But most of the time these come in what's called a zero touch config, which means that when you plug it into your network, it starts looking for a provisioning server to download its configuration by serial number to set itself up, to know what your VLANs are, to know whether or not to enable the ports. Most people don't want that. At least they're going to be running it in a home lab or, you know, a small business network or something like that. Especially if you're going to use this for business, by the way, I'm not sure that I would recommend this because you are kind of on borrowed time with the dual power supplies and the fans and all that kind of stuff. You're going to, you're going to need a console cable. Well, you don't have to have a console cable, but a console cable is the easiest way to do this, I think. It is compatible with the Cisco pinout. So you can pick up like a $3 RJ45 on one end, Cisco cable on the other in, uh, you know, cable to plug it in to the port over here and it'll give you a serial console, 9600 8-in-1. I use Minicom to configure mine. It's just a couple of commands. The walkthrough for that is on the forum. Basically, you just disable zero touch config and copy the uh, running config to the startup config, kind of like Cisco. The default fans in this are San Ace 40s. You can replace them with quieter fans. The airflow is a little unusual because it's from back to front. So you'll actually get quite a bit of airflow out the front, especially if you've got a lot of 10 gig devices. This is old school 10 gig. Let me let you in on a little secret. If you work in this kind of thing, well. That secondary fan noise, that was the power supply. So even if you replace the San Ace fans, power supplies are still gonna be a little loud. Now, I don't think it's bad. I, I, it's not something I'd want in my bedroom but I don't think it's unreasonably loud to put in a basement or somewhere in your house, in all honesty. Now, um, 40 gig ethernet. We need to have a little talk about 40 gig ethernet. So right, if you're an IT manager or someone doing networks or whatever, 40 gig, it's obsolete. Even the 10 gig that's in here is different than normal 10 gig. If you look at the specs and the stuff with this network, I mean, I, 
it's not really anything that makes sense to go into for this kind of a video, but there's a lot of changes with modern 10 gig versus 10 gig that's in this thing. One of those is latency. You're looking at a floor latency of like 800 nanoseconds passing a packet through this thing. Modern 10 gig, at least the 10 gig that you're gonna get on a modern 10 gig switch, is gonna be considerably lower, which is great for things like SANs, especially VMware and vSAN, which by the way, this switch does have hardware features for VM discovery and VMware and that kind of stuff, but it's obsolete, it's end of life, it's no longer supported by Arista. Hopefully the community will pick up and start running Linux on it and that kind of thing. There's, you know, that forum thread, I'm working on that. There's, you know, a lot of fun stuff going on with that. Uh, 40 gig, obsolete. That's why these are being gotten rid of. The 10 gig that these run is also obsolete because the latency floor is too high for modern applications. Now, if you're just running a NAS and you want gigabyte per second transfers to your NAS or even to SMB multi-channel, the Intel, you know, X X540, X550 adapters, the Quantia adapters, which is modern 10 gig, not old 10 gig, um, actually will work fine on this. 40 gig is where you run into a problem. So if you buy a switch today and it's got a 40 gig uplink, you have bought a piece of obsolete equipment. The standard has changed. There's, it's 10 gig, 25 gig, 2x 25 gig links, which is 50 gig and 100 gig. And so like this connector, QSFP quad, well, it's, it's quad. The Q is the only thing that's important there. You've got four 10 gig links in one connector, hence 40 gig. Well, 100 gig is kind of the same way, except instead of 10 gig per connection, it's 25 gig. So for the copper side of things, there's noise immunity and RF and heat generation, power and all that kind of thing. So copper 25 gig, will probably be a thing. It's kind of getting to be a thing. It's not really a thing yet. But modern switches that you're buying for your network today should be that 50 gig or 100 gig uplink or something proprietary. Well, so I don't know, the, I mean, I'd rather have 100 gig, but 100 gig versus 40 gig, uh, power utilization and the process and that kind of thing. 40 gig is basically obsolete. There's not really an upgrade path for it. So it's like 10 gig do over edition. That's why all of these are being surplus for next to nothing. So if you buy one of these, you know, you should know, but hey, like Dell and HP Enterprise are still selling 40 gig gear. Don't buy it, it's obsolete, this is why. So yeah, but $300, $400, it's a great deal. I remember paying, uh, it was like last year, the year before, it's like 3,000, 3,200, I think for a 24 port Dell Power Connect 10 gig switch with, uh, 10 gig SFP plus uplink. $300 worth every penny. 10 gig, I wanna go fast. I'm Wendell, this is level one. I bought like five of these. And I'll see you in the forums.